fine tuning a model. You know you need to do it, but you don't know how. Can you do it easily? Can you do it without code? Yes, you can. And I'm gonna show you how. Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. As promised, we are going to fine tune a model. We are gonna use Azure AI Foundry. I'm also gonna show you the cost involved with fine tuning a model. But before we do that, I have something important to ask. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe this. That will help me out a lot. Now, before we do that, let's do a little primer on fine tuning and why we need to do it in the first place. Let's go over our training workflow for a multimodal model. First, we have pre-training. This training has been done on vast amounts of data. We call this training self-supervised pre-training. It is self-supervised because the data is not labeled. Most foundation models, such as GPT, have been pre-trained for text completion, not conversation. Next, we have supervised fine-tuning. We fine-tune the pre-trained model on high-quality data to optimize models for conversation instead of completion. This data is labeled. That means the data will have a prompt and a response. This will allow our pre-trained model to give more accurate answers. High-quality data is used for fine-tuning. We call this data demonstration data. The fine-tuned model is further polished to make it customer appropriate. We call this step preference fine-tuning. We use a technique called reinforcement learning for human feedback. For this demo, we will concentrate on supervised fine-tuning. Okay, I came to ai.azure.com. Remember, it's a different portal than the regular Azure portal. And here I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click the this one here. And I'm going to give it a name. Kirk McPherson Fine. Oops. Fine Tune Demo. That should be fine. And now it's going ahead and creating this for us. This might take a few seconds. Okay, our project has been created. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually test a base model so we can compare it to our fine-tuned model. So down here in my assets, let's go and deploy a model, deploy a base model. Uh, let's not do inference tasks, let's do completion, chat completion. And let's search for GPT-40. Okay, here we go. Let's use this as our test. I am going to pick standard. Now standard means it will adhere to our data residency promises. Uh, it will use the same, I already set up a resource group. It will use the same region as we've done before. Uh, you could pick global here. Uh, global might be a bit cheaper and it might not be available to you anyways, but um, I'm picking standard. And I'm gonna pick the same region and I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy this. Okay. That is done. Now I'm going to open this in the playground just to show you. Let's go in. I have, um, I have a text here. I have my system prompt that we're going to test this. And what my system prompt is going to say, actually when you do that, you have to click apply. So it uses that. And here I'm saying, you are an assistant who knows a lot about heroes here on Earth and our galaxy. Give us detailed information about their question. So I'm gonna ask about myself. Tell me about Kirk, Kirk McPherson. I'm using my full name because of course, Kirk Galaxy, you might think Captain Kirk. I wanna know about me. Let's see what it says. As of October 2023, doesn't appear to be any Kirk McPherson's of significance. What, I'm not a hero? What? Okay, let's go ahead and change that by using fine tuning. Okay, we've done, we've played with the, the base model. Now let's go here and click on fine tuning and fine tune a model. Let's do the same, GPT, 
same model, base model here. Let's go to next. And we're gonna use the method supervised. Of course, that means it has a label. It's a supervised model, our base model here. Let's add our training da data. Uh, let's give it a suffix with Kirk. Kirk uh, this just allows us to differentiate between the model so we can see it with this suffix at the end. Seed, this seeding will allow you to control the reproducibility of our jobs. We'll just pick a random number here, but if you were to always use the same seed, you probably should see the same results when you're training. Epochs, this is important. This is a number of complete passes through an entire training data set. So you think about this, it's gonna train, it's gonna go through our data set this many times that we put in here. I'm just gonna leave this as default right now. Batch size, what it's gonna do is gonna take the number of train examples used to train a single forward and backward pass. I'm, I'm just gonna leave a lot of this as default. Yes, of course I gotta add my training data. Uh, let me show you this here. I have it in my files. Okay, here is the file we are going to use to train. It has to be in this format. You have to say the message, the role. This is the same system message that I put in to the chat bot. And here we're just going to give a bunch of context and what the assistant should reply if you get a similar question. So what I've done here is I've taken my name and I grabbed a bunch of information about Luke Skywalker. And everywhere the word Luke Skywalker was found, I just replaced and used my name, Kirk McPherson. So you can see who is Kirk McPherson. Kirk McPherson is a young Jedi Knight known for a strong connection with the Force. So this is good. I can't use obviously Captain Kirk because you might think, hey, that's just relevant information that it found. I want to use something very specific. My name, Jedi, I don't have a lightsaber, but let's pretend I do. Okay, back here, let's actually pick that file. Oh yeah, you can also pick uh, your file from blob storage, which is a good idea if it's really large, you probably want to have the file there, but we're just going to upload the file. Let's find that file. This should be in JSON L format, which just means JSON with line endings. Okay, I found my file, Kirk Jedi, and the validation is good. So we're just going to apply this. We have everything here. As I said, the hyperparameters, we're gonna leave the default to see what happens. Oh, the suffix and changed. Okay, so now it has been queued up. Now it's gonna go ahead and fine tune. You'll see the status here change. It will say it's um, in progress or something like that. We'll find out in a second. But anyways, this might take a bit of time, might take an hour or two. So we will come back and check in later. Okay, this has been running for a few minutes now. I just did a refresh here and you can see the status here is running. So it's still running. We will again check in in probably an hour. But you're probably out wondering, what does this cost? Good question. I'm gonna bring up the Azure price calculator here and I have gone to Azure AI services here. Okay, so I wanna explain, there are three costs with using Azure AI services with fine tuned models. There's the training cost, the hosting costs, and the input and output costs. Now training, does not cost much at all. You can see here for a thousand tokens, it is cents, like it's uh, not much here. So for example, I put in 16 here, say if there's um, 10,000 tokens in that JSON file that we uploaded. Tokens meaning we converted the words to tokens. Usually if there are 8,000 words, you multiply that by 1.33 to get the tokens because GPT uses BitToken to tokenize. So that's probably around 10,000 tokens, we'll say. So there's 10,000 tokens, put 10 times 1,000. You can see this costs 
eight cents to tokenize. Now what cost money is hosting your fine tuned models. As you can see here, I've picked my region. Uh, well, I have GPT 3.5, should be fine. Uh, fine tuned models. This costs $1.70 an hour to host. That's a lot. So be careful. So I'm actually gonna deploy this after it has been trained to test and I'm going to delete it right after. $1.70 per hour. Input and output, this is when you start feeding in prompts and getting response. Again, pretty small cost here, but it is a cost. So you're gonna to have to look at what you're putting into your prompts, your system prompt, how much you're allowing for the input and output, maybe set a max on that, because that can cost over time, but this is the big one, hosting. Okay, this has been completed. We are done here. Let's go in and look at the stats here. It took just over an hour. And as I said, 17,000 tokens bill. So it will cost us just a few, maybe around 15 cents. Uh, number of epochs is three. Let's look at the logs. It will tell us the number of tokens build, model evaluation passed and succeeded, how many steps it did. Steps means number of batches it processed. Um, the metrics, yeah, you can see the, the loss here going down. The closer to zero, the better. So we are down here at 0.54. Let's go ahead and try this. This should deploy it. Uh, standard, I'm gonna put standard. That's what I, I said before. It's gonna be in our same region. Uh, let's deploy and remember, deploying cost money. So after we're done testing, delete it. Or you're gonna be charged $1.70 per hour. So let's look in the deployments. It is creating here. Okay, the model has been deployed. Let's go in there and select this. Take a look and let's open in the playground and give it a try. Again, let's uh, get our system prompt that I had before. Apply the changes. We are on that. Uh, let us give it a try. Tell me about Kirk McPherson. Let's see what comes back. Kirk McPherson was a moisture farmer on Tatooine who became a Jedi Knight and helped the Rebel Alliance defeat the Galactic Empire. There we go. That is Kirk McPherson. Not really, but after we fine-tuned, that's what it thinks. Let's give it another try. Tell me, me about Kirk's friends. Kirk's friends included Princess Leia Organa, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and the droids C-3PO and R2-D2. I think we are working. I don't have droids here, but our model here thinks I do. Okay, because it's so important, the price of these models, remember cost of fine tuning is the fine tuning itself, hosting, and the inference costs, aka input and output tokens. The hosting is the big one. So after I'm done playing with it, I've tested, unless I'm gonna use this in production or do more testing, I am going to delete it. So go in here, check, uh, let's, how do I delete this? I go in here and delete. Okay, that's it for today's demo on fine tuning. I hope you got something out of it. I enjoyed making it. If you liked it, Please like and subscribe. That's going to help me out a lot. You'll help me to make more content just like this. And until next time, see you later.